Dear Hal, I think it's only fair that I tell you why I give so much of your inheritance to the Nature Conservancy. I guess now that you've learned I'm giving away what someday could be yours, you might be interested in hearing what I have to say. And I have a feeling your parents might be listening too. Well, my love affair with nature began when I was a boy, a bit older than you, but not much. I was captivated by the natural world, although in those days I just called it the outdoors. It began with animals, and eventually I could name almost every species in North America. Then my love affair spread to fish and where they live. Not only the rivers and the streams they call home, but the valleys, the gorges, and the mountainsides these waters flow through and over. Some 50 years later, Hal, I still find myself in awe of streams and rivers, wondering what secrets lie beneath their broken surface, where they've been, and where they're headed after they leave me. As you'll learn, ducks and geese got me too, taking such a strong hold on me that I spent hundreds of hours trying to recreate my favorites with wood and paint. I always felt way short of the way nature presents them to us, but I love the bond that carving and painting created between me and the birds I tried to portray. And then, of course, there's been my long-standing love affair with the high peaks of the Adirondacks. Every time I first see those purple-blue mountains silently appear as we drive north from Pennsylvania, I relax and my throat crowds with joy. Every time, how? And I only hope someday we can share the feeling together. So when I started volunteering for the Nature Conservancy, and giving them what might someday be yours. What I was doing was very selfish, for I wanted to preserve all these treasures for myself. But after a lot of thought, I now realize that when I make a donation to the Nature Conservancy, I'm not giving anything of yours away. On the contrary, I'm investing for you, saving for you, and all your generation and generations to come so that, as William Wordsworth wrote, you will come forth into the light of things and let nature be your teacher, as it has been mine. What's more, I'm doing it so that I won't be accused of another poet's curse. The earth died screaming while I lay dreaming. And last, I'm doing it so that the words of John Sawhill, a great man and a great friend of mine and all of ours, won't go unheeded. John said, in the end, our society will be defined not only by what we create, but by what we refuse to destroy. And I couldn't agree more. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm working hard to save the last great places because I think it may well be the most loving thing I can do for you. Thanks, Hal, for making things come so clear. <laughs>